being TikTok's most popular paranormal hunter with over 2.7 million followers and over 1,000 videos on his page. Kalani has cemented himself as a reputable source of terrifying paranormal activity that will scare even the bravest of ghost hunters and boggle the minds of the biggest skeptics. Though for all this success, Kalani's journey has been far from an easy one, with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, including being banned from TikTok and being arrested by armed police after being swatted. This seasoned investigator has seen it all and we plan to unravel everything in this documentary. This is the haunting rise of Kalani Ghost Hunter. Kalani Smith is a 25 year old man born in Pennsylvania with a background of multiple degrees and careers under his belt. Because I have two college degrees, right? So I have a degree in criminal justice with a concentration in Homeland Security. Wow. And I've got like a, an associate's in like liberal arts. So it's wow. like I was planning on doing politics, but that world is the paranormal sucks in some ways, but the political world sucks in like a lot more ways. <laughs> so I, I had to get out of it because it's like you got to put on a fake smile for people that you can't stand. Yeah. And the way I was raised, it's like if I don't like somebody, I'm not going to act like I like them. Right. I'm just going to tell them how it is and move on. Kalani's page didn't start out with the now infamous 2.7 million follower account though. Instead, it began with a far more modest account with a little over 220,000 followers. This page was banned from going live on TikTok though, which was a part of what Kalani did for his followers. It's more just allowing somebody that's sitting at their house or on their bed or in their on their couch and allowing them to experience the locations that I'm at um, through my adventure. So that was the whole premise when I started, and that kind of rapidly grew because when I first started, there wasn't as many people doing the live streaming from places. So like, yeah. it's one thing to watch a TV show and you know that you know it probably took them X amount of hours to film, and then the post production was like a month. But yeah. with my stuff, I mean, it's it's all right in the moment. There's no there's ways you can manipulate stuff, but it, a lot of it is a lot harder to fake things so like people enjoy the transparency factor yeah um and i think just that real-time interaction with somebody on the other side of the screen really kind of changes how people perceive the places that we go when his live paranormal investigations were banned the account became unusable leading to kalani creating this page on the 21st of august 2021. this is kalani the ghost hunter and i'm making a brand new backup account just in case tiktok wants to ban me again we're going to go live here next time. Let's get this one to a thousand followers so I can keep taking you guys on live ghost hunts. After this video, Kalani went on a journey of posting at least one video a day, every day to his TikTok page, which is where our story truly begins. Kalani's page would start off by uploading a wide array of content surrounding the paranormal, from real life scenes from movies like The Exorcism and The Exorcist. Seen from the live exorcism at Bobby Mackey's. Carl is not there. Carl's a good person. Now you, it's time for you to leave. I try to keep him away. I try to keep him away from church. Well, ever since he was a little kid, all he wanted to do was go to school and pray. That's all he ever wanted to do. But I got him riding around here on his bicycle uh, one day, and he didn't know what happened to him. Follow for more. I know he didn't know what to history about locations and places that he visits for videos. The location where the story of Freddy Krueger was born. Welcome to Elm Street. How many bodies did this... Abandoned hospitals are always a blast. Ghost Town had haunted dolls, a hanging tree, and a brothel. Follow me for more spooky. But on the 2nd of November 2021, we would start to get some clips of Kalani's investigations and the spooky activity that he captures. Doll ringing bell and shaking. She's shaking. In the box. I'm staring at her right now. Look. 
Look at that. Milani's page would stay at a lower level of popularity, with the videos getting around 10,000 views, but that was until the 26th of November 2021, when Kalani uploaded this video where he laid in a body locker. Laying in the body locker at the Morgan Waverly Hills. Is there anybody in here with me? This video got just under 850,000 views, and with comments like, Why? Just why? Hell nah. It shows that Kalani was willing to go to any lengths within his paranormal investigations to get results. This wouldn't have anything on the next string of videos though, where Kalani would visit and explore the Ted Bundy caves, where it's been admitted that Ted Bundy hid some of his victims. Walking to the Ted Bundy cave in Utah. <laughs> Like and follow to see inside the cave. Look through the cave where Ted Bundy hid two of his victims. Who's brave enough to go to Ted Bundy's cave at night? Looking for ghosts in Ted Bundy's cave. Want me to tell you how to get there? Like, comment, and follow. Kalani's TikTok was mostly dedicated to his live stream, where he would go to America's most haunted locations and set up multiple cameras where viewers can tune in and see Kalani's investigation from every angle. All right, Wendy. Let's do a quick recorder. Do you guys want me to do open mic or do you want me to ask questions first? Questions? Could be Miss Stone too. All right, it looks like questions is probably the winner. We'll do both either way, so. I need everybody to hit that arrow in the bottom right, share this out to a couple friends. If you think they'd like some spooky stuff too, but here we go. Three, two, one. Can you tell me who likes to hang out on this stairwell? Who's here with us tonight? Is it safe here for me? There's something evil in the basement. What was that? That was loud. Let's play back real quick. I didn't hear anything. Let's do open mic really quick. All right, everybody on the TikTok chat, share this out. Bottom right corner is that arrow. Keep tapping the screen for me. Um, follow me if you like spooky stuff. But we're going to do an open mic with the DR60. So we're, I'm going to be completely quiet in hopes that we get something to come through. Three, two, one.
Okay, here we go. What was that? Hang on. I thought I heard something right there. What is that saying? Choke him? Choke him. Oh, I'm getting a headache. These investigations could go on to up to 50 hours where Kalani would show every aspect of the investigation non-stop. From highlights to dips, even seeing the seasoned investigator get more and more agitated as he grows more tired and hungry through the live stream. Yeah, and you kind of build a relationship with people. Like, I have people that I talk to regularly that will come in. Obviously, you get your yahoos that will leave some crazy comments at yeah. times, but I mean, that's kind of the fun of it. Because, like, when I get tired and I get hungry, I start to snap back a little bit. And, like, my, my original people really enjoy that just because the, you can see that it's a person on the other side of the screen. Because yeah. I think for a lot of us, people see us as things that we're not because we have these numbers attached to our name, but at the end of the day, we're all just people. So I think that's that humanization that people get to see is like, you know, you know when this guy's tired and hungry, yeah. he will yeah. he will snap back. For all the success Kalani was getting on TikTok, Kalani felt it was time for a transition, so he would create and produce his own paranormal investigations as well as do them live. For this reason, on the 20th of October 2020, Kalani uploaded his first full-length video to YouTube where he did a ghost hunt at the NFL Tennessee Titans Stadium. To make the investigation even more special, he was joined by the Tennessee Titans defensive lineman, Taya Tart. The Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans. And it was quiet as a church. And then all of a sudden I heard, whoosh. Sore? Sure. Sore. Did she say sore? It sounded like sore. These? These. Sore knees. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Oh, shit! Oh, oh my gosh! It just hit pink. That's wild. Uh, where, you, where you go? I'm cool. Man. We're pretty dope. For the first time in history, we go inside of an NFL stadium looking for paranormal activity. You may be surprised to see what we found inside of Nissan Stadium, as I was joined by a player in my quest to find paranormal activity. I hope you enjoy this video, and please make sure you like and subscribe. All right, so I'm Kalani Ghost Hunter, and I'm here with Tier Tart. Tier, go ahead and introduce yourself for me. Uh, I'm Tier Tart. I'm a 93 uh, for the Tennessee Titans, third year. All right, guys, and we are going to do a little investigation here at the Titans Stadium. We're going to see, we've actually had some stories of things that have happened even inside of the locker room. So we're going to run some equipment, see what kind of interaction we get, if any, and kind of see how the night goes. You excited? Excited. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and get into it. Video started off with some history and stories of some of the strange activity that's been captured in the stadium. Civil War is the biggest one. Right over the river, where downtown is, 9,000 deaths from the Civil War. Hmm. Um, 6,000 Confederate. Something just go off? Yep. Did it really? Yeah, I don't know what that was like. Was it supposed to make noise? Yeah. There's a lot of them that make noise in there. I don't know which one it was, but yeah. That went off. Check it out. Also, Nashville had a ton of brothels in the Civil War days. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. And then the Cumberland River, they find bodies in that river every week. And they've actually had uh, boats, catastrophic crashes out here. So, could be something there. But and have been residing here since 2000. Well, and it's a former player. So of course, where else would he hang out besides the place that he's most familiar with, most comfortable with? Nobody told me this. 
Todd want to know how long I've been working here. Well, I've been working here a lot, a long time, almost 10 years. And part of our routine is we have to patrol the stadium. I was telling them how it's an open stadium. Um, we have to make sure that we don't have staff here. There's nobody here. We got to make sure on camera, everywhere. We walk around, make ourselves a uh, physical presence. And we have access to the entire stadium. Wherever you want to go in here, we can go. We have the green light to do that. So I'm walking around in this locker room. And it was on a quiet afternoon. There's only two people working. One person's in the control room, and I'm on patrol. And I walked through here. And it was quiet as a church. And then all of a sudden, I heard whoosh. I'm thinking, what was that? And that, no, nobody's here. Let me walk around a little bit more and investigate. And before I get closer, I heard it again. Whoosh. I knew what it was. It was a toy that flushed me. And when that happened, I, I thought to myself, it's got to be the spirit of our all-star MVP, the only time the Titans went to the Super Bowl, quarterback who tragically passed away young, too young. When all of this was done, the investigation begins, and some of the activity that they caught within the stadium sent chills through the audience. So that's, red means there's nothing around it, but the closer you get oh. to the antenna. There's something there. So you have to be right here for that to go off. There's, <laughs> Steve, but, 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 It's, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It just hit pink. That's wild. Uh, where, you, where you go? I'm cool with it. It's pretty dope. <laughs> you can go try it out. So like the closer you get to that antenna that's sticking up, the colors will change. So you gotta be pretty close to it for it to even register. Oh, that's great. Okay. So some, something's setting it off. Mm -hmm. huh. So guys, we've already had activity like, in the back room. Actually, equipment guys, I'll tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this this right here is a new piece of equipment. Okay. It's only been out for probably less than six months. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you heard of a Ouija board? What? Have you ever heard of a Ouija board? Yeah, I know what a Ouija board is. So this is like a digital version of one. You don't have to touch it, you don't have to do yeah. nothing with it, you just gotta look at it. Ah, cool. So what this <laughs> does is something can set this off and it can select a letter um, and spell out words where you don't have to touch it. So I was at that prison I told you about in East Tennessee and I got F-U twice mm -hmm. come through on it. And then I got the word hat get spelled out. Did something just tap it? I picked up EMF and the letter G just popped up. That, that thing's standing there, right? It's staying here? Yeah, it'll, it'll be there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No, it's, that's not a Ouija board. That's what it's supposed to be. No, I, mean, I, 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 I got you. I got one in the trunk, though, if you want. I just thought, oh, I'm going to Ouija board. Wait, you got one in the trunk? No, I'm cool. Yeah, I want to tell you. It's doing good. You know, the Ouija board kind of creeped me out a little bit, but everything else is pretty cool. A little, little sensitive thing. It goes off again. It went off again. Might be on a set timer. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was pretty cool. <laughs> we just heard the toilet flush, so. <laughs> just heard Were you freaked out? <laughs> a little bit, but you know. I got my security right here, so we good. <laughs> that was wild. How did I hear that? No, that. Okay, that's a car. I, I think, think that's outside the stadium. It's gonna that sound weird in here, but that one over there, it sounded like it was from over there. Yeah, it did. That was the first two were not. It's like a, like a bird, maybe? I don't know. We'll say it's a bird. Yeah. You a fan. Tierra the ghost hunter. 
<laughs> need to get you a cowboy hat. Yeah, that's right. We need to get you with a oh, cowboy me. hat. We need to get him up to Pinhurst. Oh, you can hold it. So as we were walking around the stadium, I had a stationary camera set up in the bathroom and we caught one mysterious noise. But when diving into the comments, people loved this first video from Kalani. Kalani always raising the bar, another awesome vid. Wow, seriously wasn't expecting this much activity. This was a banger fan. The attention that Kalani was getting was enormous, even capturing the attention of the world's biggest media outlets like the Daily Mail, who made a piece on Kalani and a terrifying encounter he had with a ghost girl. The article read, a ghost hunter claims to have spotted a little girl lurking in the supposedly haunted home, which was previously used as the set of a horror movie, A Savannah Haunting. Kalani Smith claims he was invited to investigate the set by the team after they had finished filming. Released in April 2021, the movie tells the story of a family who loses their young daughter in a tragic drowning incident and moves to Savannah. But as it turns out, the real life story behind the movie might be even more sinister than the on-screen tale. At least according to the ghost hunter and TikToker Kalani, who was left stunned by what he believes is the spirit of the young child that is haunting the Savannah Georgia property. Okay, I think my eyes are just playing tricks on me. And this camera right next to me, maybe if it did happen, can see it. But I swear I just saw a little head. Right. So I am sitting in Savannah, Georgia, one of the most haunted cities in the U.S., and I've been live streaming the past two and a half days. Now, what's even more interesting is I'm sitting in the house that the movie A Savannah Haunting was filmed in. Now, the house has a ton of paranormal activity that has taken place since we have been live, but we caught something last night that was very disturbing. Let me show you. So on live last night, one of my viewers actually captured this image and let me know what you guys think, but I think it's the side profile of a little girl. Now, if you've seen the movie, you know that this is an integral part of that story, but make sure you guys tune into the live tonight to see if you can catch our next piece of great evidence. Who's brave enough to spend the night in one of the most haunted homes in America? It's in Savannah, Georgia, and it was so haunted they made a horror movie about it. I'll be on a live stream here for the next three days. Could you sleep in the house that the horror movie A Savannah Haunting was based on and filmed in? We have had some crazy activity, and we are in the most haunted city. Have you been to Savannah, Georgia? I am live streaming this for two more days as I live here. Not all the attention that Kalani received, though, was good, as on the 9th of December 2022, Kalani was swatted whilst he was on a live investigation to his 2.2 million followers on TikTok. Hands, 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 hands. Step back. Turn it on, face it away. Right, so Can I set this down? down. Yeah, no, sir. Supposed to be people here filming. That's correct. 
problem is, we got a call. Hang on, I'm going to lock that so it doesn't tighten up on me, okay, man? Okay. Problem is, we got a, we got a call, believe it or not, it's from out of state. says there was a TikTok live feed going on. Uh-huh. And that's correct? That's so, correct. All right. So, I understand. I know you guys, there's supposed to be people here filming. That's correct. Problem is, we got a call. Hang on, I'm going to, I'm going to lock that so it doesn't tighten up on me, okay, man? Okay. Problem is, we got a, we got a call, believe it or not, from out of state, says there was a TikTok live feed going on, uh -huh. and there was construction being done to the house. Now, we were advised by the key holder, supposed to be a female here. And well, my name's Kalani. It may sound like a female name, but I, I, think, that's why. Way, I think that's the way it kind of came across. All right, you've got to turn around here, not both you guys. So, who's got the Indiana Camaro? That's him. That's you. Okay. What's your name, bud? Zach Phillips. Zach Phillips. Okay. Is there any weapons on either one of you guys at all? Not on me. I have my uh, concealed carry handgun in my small pelican case in the room. Okay. And I have my carry. All right. Okay. I said, it's not that you guys are doing anything wrong, but we got to call. We have to do what we're supposed to do here. Okay? No, and we have uh, the surveillance cameras are still ongoing all over the house. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think somebody probably just swatted me. That's a real good possibility. Uh, are, you still, are you guys still alive? Yes. I'm not alive. I'm still alive. alive. My phone's still alive. Yeah. So I think it's okay. Probably got slaughtered. I yeah. think it's fun. We'll have two males detained. I'll get IDs here momentarily. So, yeah. It is probably a real good possibility. I'm curious if you guys will have a fine with that. I'm not here. You guys have been cooperating with us, so we're good. Or that's a piece of um, Do you have your ID on you, bud? Um, it's in the room. Why don't right, you want permission? Where it's at? Well, you, can you, what, what do you have down with you? Pull my power pack out. Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a piece of right. Sorry, folks at home. Kind of delaying the program. Yeah. In an article, Kalani said, quote, I was doing a seven-day investigation at Octagon House, a historic landmark built in 1883, located in Circleville, Ohio. But on day four, the Nashville native claims he was ambushed after armed local cops arrived during his live stream, with a confused viewer mistaking the hunter for a burglar. An out-of-state number reported the live stream for burglary and vandalism where we were put in handcuffs and detained, Kalani said. Sharing the traumatic ordeal with his fans, he uploaded a three-part clip of the live stream, with one clip racking up 127,000 views and over 7,000 likes. After this ordeal, the support for Kalani just continued to roll in. This incredible support was a huge confidence boost for Kalani and be all the fuel he'd need to post his next paranormal investigation two weeks later, where he would this time investigate one of the most haunted prisons in all of America, Bushy Mountain, which held some of the world's most notorious criminals like James Earl Ray. Welcome to Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary in Petras, Tennessee. The story of Brushy Mountain actually begins after the Civil War had taken place. The US was big into railroad construction and mining and needed people to work. If you're familiar with coal mining or mining in general, many of the times the mining companies would have a hold on every part of a miner's life. All of the stores within the area would be owned by the mining company and the miners would essentially leverage their time of working for necessities such as food, clothing, water. By the time they finished paying for their basic necessities, their wages were very, very low. They also had some of the worst working conditions out of all industries in American history. This led to many riots and revolts that ended up very bloody. This would lead the state of Tennessee to start a prison lease program. This worked for the state of Tennessee because they didn't have the funding to establish prisons or other containment facilities. The worst part of this was that many of the former slaves in the south were convicted on the pettiest of crimes. This actually caused an uproar in 1891 by the citizen miners due to the fact that all of their work had been taken by the convict lease program. The violence surrounding this area led the state to build Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary in 1896. The irony of it all is the fact that the building was constructed to resemble a cross to symbolize salvation. From tuberculosis to typhoid fever to pneumonia and syphilis, this place was disease ridden. Mind you, the majority of the prisoners were African American and they went through some of the harshest conditions in Tennessee history. They would be punished if they didn't hit their mining quotas in a given week or day. 
These extreme conditions led to many deaths on the property. Before we go any deeper in the history, I want to take a second to acknowledge the fact that this was slavery under a different name. To me, this truly makes it a gate to hell, and I think this history is important to know so that we do not repeat it in the future. Brushy Mountain would have been used from 1896 until 2009. The biggest reason for the close? Budgeting issues. Over its 113 year lifespan, it gained the notoriety as one of the most violent prisons in the United States. With a history like that, how could you expect spirits not to be stuck here in a place so violent and so dark? This is Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. This investigation would again be another collaboration with Kalani investigating with Paranormal Quest and Hauntings with Hodge, which provided a great dynamic for the video with each investigator bringing something different to the video. This investigation went on to be one of the creepiest videos Kalani would ever upload, with some of the most horrifying activity being captured. Even their showers had bars. Was that you? Uh-uh. No. That was like a solid, like, thud. I, even their showers had bars. Was that you? I heard it. Yeah, that was loud enough that it felt like it vibrated. Hang on, let me make sure. No, that ain't me. This is no, concrete. No, that wasn't you. That was a, it sounded like it was... Can you make that sound again, please? That had some bass to it. Yeah. What is that? Notice this. The only way this door was opening was following this path. If somebody tried to alter it or pry it, this sucker's not opening. That's actually kind of what it sounded like. But not right here, off in the distance. Hang on. Shadow one above. It had bait to it. Whatever it was. There should be another one at the end of this hall. I'm not mistaken. I wasn't able to exactly locate where the thud came from, but what I do know is whatever made that noise definitely had some bass to it. All right, guys, so we have some equipment set up here. Onboard just went off at the last holding cell, James Earl Ray. Now, my name's Kalani. James, if you're here with us tonight, can you let us know by selecting yes on this device right here? Ultrasonic is going on. So that's a motion detector as well, guys. The beeping you're hearing is a motion detector. We invite anyone to come forward and communicate with us tonight. Now we've heard that James has been here before. And then, yes, we got a yes. Okay, James, my name's Kalani. I know you don't know who I am, but would you be willing to communicate with us tonight? You hear that? Sounds like talking. Hang on, let me turn this off. What was that? I couldn't hear the steps as clearly on replay, but in person it sounded like there was someone standing or walking in the stairwell. The investigation took a creepy turn though when the three teams decided to split up and take different areas of the prison to investigate. This next session we're about to do is going to be similar to how we started the night in pairs, but we're kind of randomizing the pairs a little bit. Now the girls are going to be together because we all thought it'd be a good idea to send two women off on their own inside of this prison complex. Um, because if there is an entity here, they're probably going to want to interact with them more than us. 
just being honest. Uh, but the rest of us, we're going to flip a coin and see kind of who goes where. So I'll flip first and we'll see. Uh, I got heads. Okay, Josh, flip and see what you get here. You got tails. Perfect. That lines up good. All right, Ryan. Wasn't even a flip. Oops. All right, it's been decided. I'm going with Josh. Ryan's going with Josh. I'm going with Dave, and the two girls are going to be together. On the 23rd of April 2023, Kalani's channel and videos were about to take a huge turn when he would investigate Octagon Hall with the insanely popular Exploring with Josh, a huge exploring and paranormal YouTuber with over 4 million subscribers. I decided that we were going to hit up Josh. I mean, we're going to definitely create something great here. I know that. So this is Exploring with Josh. If you don't know him, then you're probably living under a rock. But this location has a very interesting history. And not only is it interesting, but you could even probably side with negative. Now, there's something in the basement that is supposed to be seven feet tall and malevolent. Now, the history here makes you wonder, like, what if this entity has been here all along? Like a conjuring house. Like, what if that negative entity is what caused all of the misfortune, right? So Andrew Jackson Caldwell was the original builder of this building, and he was a Freemason. Now, he was not a 33 and a third, which would be your top. He was right below that at a 32nd degree. But everything in this building was intentional, from the, the angles of the windows to the construction of the walls to the overall formation of the building. He did it on purpose. Why did he do it that way? We don't know. No. But what we do know, if we go into this room right over here, is that he constructed it so that each of these windows aligned with a different part of our environment in terms of our seasons here. So summer, winter, autumn, spring. Now what's interesting is Josh even mentioned this. Yeah, well do was, the doors though. There's upside an upside down, down cross. All of them. Which normally this would be flipped. Like normally your longer part would be in the bottom and this would be up top. But for some reason, it's flipped in this house. And six, six, six windows. Oh yeah, six every, the six windows in this whole place, but each floor, so that's six, six, six. So that makes you wonder, mm -hmm. you know, did he just do that for kicks and giggles or was there something else there? Exactly. And, what, and I think the owner said like they think maybe over like 600 people could have died here. Yeah, because you have all of the Civil War bodies. Yeah. But here's what gets crazy is his wife literally had her hand chopped off by a soldier. So he he his loses his son, his first, right? his first wife. Oh my, I didn't even know that. Yeah, so she literally lost her hand and she died of typhoid fever. <laughs> his daughter caught on fire in the kitchen downstairs and yeah, died. I really think of that's horrible. And then her, her kid broke her neck. So literally neck. you've that got is, yeah. his baby dying, you've got his daughter dying, all in the same property. Now the Civil War literally rolled up to his doorstep with Confederate soldiers needing somewhere to, to seek refuge. So you had hundreds of Confederates here, actually thousands of Confederates if we're being completely honest, and when they got pushed to Nashville, the Union came in and just slaughtered the injured Confederate soldiers here. So you add this interesting component of this particular construction of the house with all of this bad misfortune from a historical presence and just a lot of dark energy. We could in be dealing with something very dark here. That could have got built up too. Because you've got slavery, you've got all of these different components that have now fed into this house, and we're literally staying here. For an entire night. The activity that the investigators captured in this video was chilling and would go on to frighten the entire community. <gasps> Dude, did it, it lit up red. Did it go? Yes, you see it, right? Yeah. It lit up. It said no. Okay. It literally said no, like it don't want to answer you. Would you be willing to answer some questions? Maybe you're just learning how to use this new device. Can you light up? Oh, shit. <sighs> Yo, okay. this is sick. Okay. Are we speaking with Mary Elizabeth right now? Oh my gosh. This is good. Mary Elizabeth, if you can come and let us know that you're here, we just want to communicate with you. I'm going to bring out Spirit Talker and leave it going. Okay. Turning it on right now. Is there anything? Okay, it said yes. It just said yes? It just said yes. Did it? I got, I, got, I got the feed so I can, okay. I can get it over. Okay. So Mary Elizabeth, is there something in the basement that we need to be afraid of? <gasps> what? 
What was that? What the hell was... I was that like a... I don't know what that noise was. Something just moved. Something moved? Something moved. I, my heart is pounding. Dude, what? and it, it triggered it though. Is there something we should be afraid of? Boom. Went off again. Can they say it here though? Yeah, can you confirm it here? There's something we need to be afraid of. Dude, I got chills. Yeah. Too. Yeah, this, chills. this place is nuts. Oh my God. I got Spirit Talker going. I'm just going to leave that running. Yeah. People have had bad experiences in the basement. We just want to know what we're in for. Is there something we need to be concerned with? I don't know what that noise was. It's thinking back in my head, it almost sounded like a cat, like a hissing sound. Yeah, like a ha. Like yeah. yeah, like that. And it's crazy because now it's not going off. The music box. But it was like literally that noise and then the music box instantly. Yeah. It said no. Oh, it just said no? But I don't... I think I'm afraid of that, though. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think I'm afraid of that. Yeah. Do you have your 60 on you? Yeah. Yeah, I... Energy. It just said energy. All right. Yeah, you're, you're, you're using energy. We appreciate that. <gasps> oh, oh, shoot. Again. Oh, Right when I mentioned using energy. Dude, there's someone just chilling in the hallway. Unless they're stuck in some loop. I mean, the stairs, people always have to use stairs, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll take this out because I never hit play on the little thing I asked. Wow. Yeah. Hell. It says hell. I don't know. Hell? Hell. Uh. uh dude, all I'm saying is I've been here once before. And this place has always been the darkest place I have done in at least the last year and a half. This place is like so like messed up to me. I'm gonna play this back really quick because this was when we were inside that hole. Well, oh, I heard nothing. No, I didn't hear right. anything. Music box. Oh, nothing. Dude. You mentioned it. It said yes. It's been saying yes. Maybe we should do this in Mary Elizabeth's yeah. room. Let's step in here. I'm gonna go ahead and... Bro, that's not even pointed at us. No, it's pointed It's right here, there's someone here. Okay, here we go. So again, Mary Elizabeth, if you would like to communicate with us, three, two, one, can you say the word banana? Ending EVP. Right when I said ending EVP, it cuts. Yeah. But dude, what about that full on tap? Yeah, I don't know what like, that was. Like, is this someone's playing with either those or not? All right, here, let's. Nothing. Mm -mm. I don't hear anything. The perfect mixture of Kalani and Josh's popularity and the terrifying activity captured would come together to make the video head and shoulders above any investigation that came before, with this video getting well over 40,000 views. Josh and Kalani would go on after this to become good friends, which would lead to Josh becoming a regular feature in Kalani's videos moving forwards. The next investigation Kalani did was completely alone, and what Kalani describes as... Guys, I'm at one of the scariest locations I've ever been. This is the Tennessee Demon House located in Morristown, Tennessee. Now I'm going to give you guys some of the history that we have access to, but I am not kidding when I say that this is probably the scariest location I have done to date. And this is why Kalani was so anxious to be alone in this abandoned house built by the Freemans many years ago. Up until about 2010 when it would sit vacant. Now what's interesting about this home is there is symbolism throughout the entire building. Freemason symbols are something that is very common in Freemason structures such as temples and even homes. 
If you guys remember in my last video with Josh, we were at Octagon Hall, which was also a Freemason building, and symbolism rides throughout that place. So is symbolism something that keeps these dark entities locked into these places? I'm not 100% sure. But what I do know is this house is very demonic. Now we actually have a live stream here the night before I filmed this video. And we have some of the most activity I've ever had at a particular location. So I decided for my YouTube video, I would be going back the next night alone. Now I'm gonna give you two clips from that live stream night. One is from an Estes session. And one is when we actually catch a hat moving off of a table. Go ahead and roll the tape. Mrs. Has someone has someone conjured you here? Legion, fuck that. No way. Legion, I don't want nothing to do with that. Think about what I just asked. Yeah. I asked. I nothing to fucking do with that. I... What is that tapping? Is that your Mag-D spinner? No, Mag-D just makes a constant noise. It doesn't tap. What the fuck is that tapping? Oh, oh shit, your hat shit, just fell. See that? What the fuck? When Kalani gets into the investigation, it becomes clear why Kalani was so on edge. Before Kalani even begins the investigation, he sets out to rile up the demons within the house after playing a flute and playing religious music. So guys, that is somebody that's literally an exorcist saying that he believes that there are possibly 10 demonic entities in this home. So they already tried this blessing once and everything went sideways. So they're leaving me here alone tonight but before they go, I had the bright idea of one, he has a flute that he plays. And, I, and you actually played the flute and they didn't like that either. No, they don't like that. And, and normally I, I played the flute to kind of be a, as a grounding. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just to kind of just calm the environment a little bit. But it's actually served in quite the opposite direction. It's actually stirred things up. Okay, so I don't know what they think about this idea, but I'm wanting him to play the flute. And then right before they go, and before I'm alone, I want them to play the same blessing that they played the last time that they, they played it, and we're going to see what happens with this house. So I'm trying to provoke this thing and piss it off as much as possible. So before we even get started in the investigation, we're going to try and piss off this demon. Now, do you want to play the, the full three times? Because What's the significance of, with that? Something about the power of three. Um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's uh, was that the instructions that you were given yeah, was to play it three times? By, uh, Ruben Lopez, yes. Okay, so I think we should play it three times. Yeah, let's so do let's it. get these lights off, and uh, we'll go ahead and get ready for investigation form. By the flute, and then we're gonna head straight into the chant. So where have you guys got most of the activity? Uh, at the the top of the staircase, which you said was a portal, right? Yes. Okay. All right. And what I can do is, is what, what I like to do, with, with your permission, of course, is to go to the top of the staircase, and I like to play from the top of any, basically, structure, and the, let the music just kind of fall down through. Okay. Um, I think that's the best way for me to approach that. Um, that way it fills the house with, with, with the joy that we're, I'm, I'm going to attempt to do. But... Um, I've already proven that the joy just doesn't happen. It, it pushes back. So. Which is interesting because I love music and investigations, and it it's weird when something doesn't like music. Well, it's, you're about to witness something that's completely backwards from what it should be. Well, I love backwards. All right. Well, you're gonna get some backwards. All right. So, guys, he's gonna go upstairs and play the flute and fill the home with this music. We don't have any equipment out right now. We're kind of just trying to piss this thing off and uh, see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna try to play a beautiful sound. Okay.
well, thank you. And then they have the other part of this recipe that we are trying to uh, make here is uh, this chant. So we're going to play the chant three times as instructed, and then they're going to leave. And it's just going to be me inside of this demon house all by myself. We love it! But we're going to play this chant three times and uh, send them on their merry way. Okay, here goes one. All right. Mm -hmm. When this is done, Rob and Alan, the landlords, leave, leaving Kalani all alone with a riled up spirit who could pounce at any moment. This is when the investigation truly begins and the activity ramps up. So for anyone wondering, this is my custom spirit box from Austin Maynard. He will build for you if you want one. Is there a demonic entity here? Yeah, and the epoch just went off. How many demons are here? Ten. ten. Oh, it said ten. That's what Father Lopez said. He said there was ten demons in here. The investigation ends with some terrifying EVPs captured with the demon that plagues the house. I'm hearing voices. I'm literally hearing voices. I don't know if that's from outside or what. I hope the camera, I'm about to shit my pants. What the fuck was that? Let's do a playback right there and see if we picked it up on the iPhone. I'm gonna skip right to the end really quickly. What is your favorite color? You can hear it in the EVP. Listen, listen, listen. What is your favorite color? You can hear a male talking. Holy shit. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. Whatever the male was that just spoke to me, can you do that again? On the 11th of July 2023, Kalani embarked on his scariest paranormal investigation yet, with the video attacked by a demon in Indiana's infamous demon house caught on camera, Monroe Demon House, where we join Kalani as he embarks on a chilling paranormal journey into the infamous Monroe House in Hartford City, Indiana. Right now, um, I've heard crazy stories about here, from possible human remains being found, to occult rituals, to seances, Ouija boards, demons, pretty much all of the bad things in the paranormal people have said about this house. So I'm excited to investigate tonight and see what kind of activity we can get inside, but I don't know if Savannah is very excited. It doesn't really matter, because 
We're here for the video. <laughs> This haunted location is notorious for its past, including its startling discoveries of human remains. In this unnerving episode, not only does Kalani encounter spectral entities, but his wife faces a horrifying ordeal, a direct attack by a demonic presence. All right. You're being very quiet tonight. Can you knock back to this? You're not a very strong demon if you're a demon. Bro, look at all the spider eggs up there. Yikes. Do we need to go to- Ow! What? Ow! Ow what? Oh! Ow! <gasps> it feels like there's like a rod in my stomach. You okay? No. Hang on. Oh, let me get out. No, you don't have to get out. Oh my gosh. Holy shit. <gasps> oh. Oh my gosh. You good? <sighs> Here, help. Help me down. Oh. I don't know if I can stand up. Oh. You okay? It feels like a knife is going through my stomach. Step away from her. Oh, ow! It's like in my stomach and going down into like, I don't know if it's like my ovaries or something, but it feels like it's up in my stomach and then moving down and then up in my stomach and moving down. I command you to step away. Oh. Oh my gosh. I gotta sit down. I command you to step away from her. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. Here, help me help me get you help me get out of here. I'm gonna get you out of here. I just need to sit for a second. It's like if I straighten, it hurts. <sighs> Leave her alone. The flux just went off. Which side lit up? Going to the stairs. Leave her alone. never felt like pain like that in my whole life. I wonder if it's because I'm trying to get it to do something that I don't know if it can do anything to me. That felt like an organ was like, if the pain was so bad, I would have thought an organ was rupturing or something. And now it's just gone. Here, let me uh... That was so scary. Let me put this down. There's like, nothing hurts now. Wow. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. This wouldn't be the only time where Kalani's wife would be involved in paranormal investigations though. Part of the, the fun with my content is I usually end up sending my wife to like the place she'd le least like to go. <laughs> um, because it's kind of fun because, you know, she's with me for literally the reason of if she's not with me on the road, then she doesn't get to see me that yeah, often. So right. it makes it 
a lot more enjoyable for both of us because we get to work together and she gets to travel with me. But um, my my followers give me crap because I'll be like, all right, Savannah, we're going to send you to the fifth floor at Waverly Hills and then I'm going to go to the body shoot. They know it doesn't really bother me. But then you go watch her camera and it's like shaking oh, and she's yeah. like, I think I'm hearing something. It's It, it makes great content, yeah. but um, at the expense of... But we don't, we don't fight that much, so it must not bother her too much. One of Kalani's next videos would be his biggest yet. With just shy of three hours, this video is a mammoth, made even better by the fact that Kalani is once again joined by exploring with Josh. In this chilling episode, we join the two investigators on a chilling paranormal adventure in the infamous Hell House LLC, the true filming location of the renowned horror movie. In this spine-tingling episode, they uncover the terrifying secrets of this haunted site, interacting with the spirits and capturing unexplainable phenomena. Whoa, dude! Did you? That whole mirror just shook and moved! I have it on video! Yeah, Josh was standing there and I saw it go... Bro, I have it on... I have it on video. The whole thing shook and moved. I saw it right when you said it. I was looking right at it. Look, like, I'm moving this and it's not even moving. No. No! Nothing. Dude! For the camera, for the camera's sake! Turn it one more time. I have... Dude, this is the best evidence. Yeah, I was literally looking right at you, Josh. You didn't even move. Oh, like, it's not moving at all. Oh my god! The whole the entire mirror was shaking! <laughs> and I got it on video. You can hear it. Do, 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 and I'm recording. I'm just like, what the hell? We just started. This episode is today one of Kalani's most popular, gaining over 35,000 views. And with comments like, I stopped 30 minutes into the video. Watched the Hell House movie 1, 2, and 3 then came back to finish this video. The context helped, and it made the tour they give you fellas even in the beginning that much more amazing. Amazing investigation, I was totally hooked all the way through. Y'all did awesome, as always. To this day, Kalani is still regularly uploading content to both his TikTok and YouTube channels, with each investigation getting bigger, longer, and better with every upload. And with every investigation featuring a new special guest, you truly never know what will happen next. But as always though, I hand it over to you. What do you make of Kalani's investigations and content? Would you be able to keep up with Kalani and ghost hunt alongside him?